Today I want to speak a message and I haven't been able to do a message for quite a number of months now because um, my old laptop had the camera had kind of conked out and I couldn't find myself a good enough camera due to this. Um, I was just trying to put the money together for a new camera and a new laptop. You know, this this ongoing financial crisis has been rather intense, hasn't it? And it was just a bit challenging to find the money. However, I managed to get myself a new laptop which has a, a camera so I can continue now. So um, that was the reason why I hadn't done any more messages for a while. However, today I just want to speak a message and uh, for those that have an ear to hear, um, and what I want to say today is uh, that faith is all about a new beginning, okay? And it's about a new beginning whilst we live on this earth. Because it's, um, there was like a man of God, Dan Moller, he was saying that God did not just make you born again on this earth to have your name written in the Lamb's Book of Life so that when you die, you go to heaven one day and that's it. That's not, it's not just so we die and go and say we go to heaven. No, yes, obviously that's what will happen eventually. But the reason for us being born again on this earth is that God has a specific purpose for all men and women of God. It's not just so that our names would be written in the Lamb's Book of Life and we die and go to heaven. It's not just so we save ourselves and that's it. We are here to preach the Word of God and the Kingdom of God. And we are here to do the will of God. And um, this preacher, man of God, Dan Moller, was saying that he put new life into you so that you would go out there into the world and preach the good news of the gospel message of the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, it's not just about, oh, we save ourselves, but everyone else can just go their merry own way, no problem. No, he says we are here, once we're born again, then God wants to use us as a vessel to reach lost souls. It's not just about us anymore, it's about everybody. It's not about us, I mean, it is about us, but it's about us knowing the Lord Jesus Christ. And it's about Jesus, but it's about everybody getting on the boat as well. Like, you know, if you imagine Noah's Ark and we're all going to be saved from the flood. It's not about just us getting on saying, oh, well, we're all right. We've done the Lord's Prayer and, we, you know, we're, we're saved and sealed and our names. No, we also have to, to go out there and reach lost souls. So... Um, Obviously, we have to exercise our freedom in the Lord Jesus Christ. We have to go out there and exercise our free the freedom that Jesus Christ has given us because obviously he died on that cross of Calvary and um, the day we accepted Jesus Christ into our life was the day we became free. Now, people might say, a lot of you are not free because you're still in bondage to the system. You're still not, you know, you're unemployed, you're in captivity to the economic system or maybe some people are in prison or I don't know. But for some of us, we're just captive to the, you know, to the ec economic system. Um, but we're still free in Christ. It doesn't matter. We still have, our soul is free. So we are told to go out into the world Preach the good news of the Lord Jesus Christ so that we can reach lost souls and, and we are expected to exercise our freedom and we are supposed to preach the, um, like the Bible says, you're supposed to go out into the world as lights. Shine your lights before men. So we are supposed to go out there with joy, with freedom and, you know, exercising our freedom in the faith, joyfully praising the Lord in front of people, even in front of atheists and sinners, because they might think, well, why are they so happy? What, what is all this? Because they haven't got faith. So you have to show them that by having faith is the only way you can have true joy and true freedom. 
because Jesus is love. God is love. The Bible says that God is love and love is the best thing that anyone can ever have. Hatred is never cool. Hatred is never right. People that have hatred in their hearts, have you ever noticed they're always miserable? Hateful people, they're not happy. They're not. They don't have the joy of the Lord. To have the joy of the Lord in your in your life, you need to have love. You see, Jesus said, Jesus said, love your enemies, okay? It, everything about God, it's all about love, yeah. It's all about love. That's why we're told to go out there and preach the good news of the gospel and to reach lost souls and to tell them about the love of Christ because Jesus dying on that cross of Calvary was surely the like the most undeniable love that that can ever be shown to all of humanity <clears throat> that he was so concerned about us losing our salvation that you know that he was prepared to lay his life down and die on that cross of Calvary and then he rose to life three days later and he done that out of love you know that was the greatest love that was ever shown to humanity you see God is all about love you know, so when you've got all these people going around with hatred and look deep at, look at them deeply in their soul. They're very miserable, hateful people and never happy. They're never happy. They're very desperately miserable. They need Jesus Christ because any kind of racism, any kind of hatred, any kind of like discrimination or anything like that is always hatred. <clears throat> it's never love. It's never love. And honestly, the, the only way that humanity can find true happiness and joy is the Lord Jesus Christ doing what he said. Okay, even if there are people who have enmity with one another, instead of hating each other, do what Jesus said. Jesus said, love your enemies. I don't know, people need to get this message, okay? Once they get it, they'll be like, oh, I get it. But they need to get it first. Jesus is love. God is love. And hatred, it just ain't cool. <laughs> I'm sorry, but it isn't. Hatred is not cool. Anyway, I saw a vision. This is what I want to speak today. And I had this vivid vision. And um, this was a few months ago. Right, I saw a vision. And the earth was split into two. As if there'd been a massive earthquake, right? And, and I saw the cross of Calvary was in between the split. And the cross of Calvary was there, you know. Um, it was kind of just sitting in between the cracked earth with Jesus crucified on there with a crown of thorns. And the right side of the land was representing your past. Then Jesus Christ in the middle of the cracked earth. And then, then the other side was you walking onwards into your new life. Okay, so there is such a thing as being born again and separated completely from your past. So that, what I got from that vision was the cracked earth was just you being separated from your past because the Bible says that God separates us from our past as far as the east is from the west. He separates us from our sin as far as the east is from the west. He doesn't want us to be connected to our sin anymore, right? So that's what I believe that uh that represented you know and um and what i want to say is how can enemies keep going on and on and on about the same issue with you with you or i okay you know they're like a record stuck in a groove you know like you were stuck and it's just playing over the same thing right 
you know, there's such a thing. What we have to say to them is, yo, did, did you know that there's such a thing as being born again when you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ? The one, the son of God who died on that cross of Calvary. Did, did you realize that one can be born again? Um, you know, and this is what I want to say today. If everybody just learned how to love, respect and appreciate one another, this world would be paradise on earth, okay? It, it would be. Then there would be joy and happiness within every household, within every family, and, and that would be great, you know. Um, there's not a limit to God's joy. There's not a limit to God's joy. He's abundant in everything and joy because the Bible says, the joy of the Lord is my strength. So that means that any of us that have been born again, that truly have accepted this Christian faith and the Lord Jesus Christ crucified on the cross of Calvary and that he rose to life three days later as their Lord and Saviour who died for humanity's sins. He died for our sins and whomsoever the Son of God sets free, is free indeed, okay? So you can boldly tell your enemies, okay? No matter what you say and do, okay? Jesus still remains Lord in my life. He still remains Lord in your life, okay? He's the only way for our salvation and he is the light of the world, yeah? And he is our treasure. Jesus Christ is our treasure. He's our treasure. And if, uh, if everybody only knew that all these rows and battles is because they are rowing over, you know, everybody's complete freedom, and Jesus came to set the captives free, you know, he came to set us free. The Bible says he's called the great deliverer who came to set the captives free, okay? Now, I know there's many of us, like, we are captive to an unjust system and economy, okay? And I understand that. And Jesus wants to set us free. That is not God's will for us to be captive, okay? The Bible says, God says, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you, not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. That is what God says, you know. Um, you know, and it seems a lot of us, we're captive to this economical unjust system and we need to be set free, you know. Um, it's kind of similar like when the children of Israel were captive in Egypt, kind of similar and Moses kept saying, let them go, let them go, you know, so that they go, so that they can go into their land of plenty, milk and honey and abundance. Well, that's a bit like us. We are at the moment living below our means, but we're supposed to have entered our land of plenty, which is prosperity, okay? However... That's like when God tells you, you walk into your new season, okay? Your new season, a new chapter in your life, the life of plenty and abundance, okay? And, and you know, you've, you've kind of got enemies and adversaries. They say, you can't enter your new season. You know, when they, when they, keep, when they keep these issues going, you know, they, they don't want to let us be free. They don't want us to experience the, the fullness of the freedom that Jesus gave us on that cross of Calvary, you know. Um, when Jesus died on the cross of Calvary, okay, to set us all free, you know. He died for all of our sins and errors, all of it covered, all of it covered. He paid the price. Jesus paid the price on the cross of Calvary so that we may be free, you know. Um, we do have a situation where we have enemies trying to kind of like hold issues against us, trials and tribulations. They're always trying to give us setbacks. 
But we're going to have to ask God, look, Lord, you've got to deliver us. Because they're acting just like the Egyptians, not allowing us to walk into the new season of plenty and abundance and joy and freedom, you know. Um, you know, and it's enough. You know, it's it's enough. We, we really do need to be set free. Um, but however, um, you've got to understand that you have your right to exercise your freedom in the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? We have our right to exercise our freedom in the Lord Jesus Christ. So that's my message today, that we are here as children of God to exercise our freedom in the Lord Jesus Christ. And in order to do so, we need to be free. We need to be set free because the Lord said to go out there into the world and preach the new good news of salvation to shine your lights before all men, okay? And it's not about us, it's about Jesus. But if Jesus makes us shine, it's for the glory of God. It's for the glory of God, okay? And it's not necessarily about us, it's about us and our relationship with Jesus Christ. And it's about, um, you know, it's not just that we got born again so that we would have our names written in the Lamb's Book of Life so when we die we go to heaven and that's it and then you just sit down and wait wait to go to heaven. I mean, that is not, that is not the gospel. The gospel message is you being born again, yes, one day we will die and go to heaven, amen, but it's not just that you then just sit down and say, oh, well, I'm, I'm in the Lamb's Book of Life and I die and go to heaven and I'm, I'm not... You know, God expects us to at least try to reach the lost and to shine our lights before men. He doesn't expect us to just sit down and say, oh, well, I'm all right and the rest can, can go their merry own way. God God is not going to be too pleased if we if we act like that. We want people to become saved. We don't want them. My true wish is not for enemies to be punished or enemies to go to hell. That's not my true wish. Although there's been times they've made me so mad and I've shouted, they'll be punished and they'll, they'll go to hell. Yes, I mean, you know, when they provoke us again and again, I don't know if it's the devil doing this or whatever games they think they're playing. I don't know. However, uh, I hope this message helped somebody to... Have a little bit of clarity and God bless you. I wish you a great day.